Welcome back to Sunless Skies. In the last episode, we came from the Reach and came to the new Albion, redesigned and reset for me in the Wayfair update for the very first time. So the new Reach Transit Relay is here at the bottom instead of about here. Uh, London is of course in the center of the map still. And uh, well, that's about all we've done so far. Let's explore London. I think there's at least one thing to do here, uh, quest-wise. And then, of course, I want to get more crew and repair my ship and stuff like that. Let's go repair first. Fully repair. 102 sovereigns. Let's turn in port reports to the stalwart bookkeeper. Oh, do I not have any to turn in? Oh, I guess I don't. Let's recruit people. Recruitment mission. Four to six crew. Now we're back up to ten. Cost 40 sovereigns. That was really cheap, actually. Oh, what is... Oh! Allow the signalman to curry favor with London's elites. I think this is the first... Uh, what did they call it in the Wayfair update? Second Mint? Kind of a weird term. Um, yeah, this is uh, Shore Leave. The first Shore Leave opportunity that I've seen. He's expressed interest in doing some work in London for you. He will leave your engine. You can pick him up again at any time. Oh, I can leave the princess to set up a salon here, too. Oh, that's cool. Uh, but this is the quest I was thinking of. Deliver a Christmas card from the Winter's Reside in Eleutheria, I think. The card is for the obsolescent weaver at a slum near the vast textile factory. A child returning from work gives you directions. <laughs> Just absorbing that for a second. Textile factory. A child returning from work. Okay, so that's the kind of place London is. A stinking garret. The weaver sits by the window, breathing through a soot gray cloth. When you hand her the card, she peers at it to read the address, then fumbles it open. Finally, she speaks, while considering the factory opposite. Obsolescent is polite. Useless is what I am. Can't even patch up their uniforms. I'm nothing but a burden. Not that them here would admit it. Bunch of kind-hearted fools. The old weaver fetches an ancient carpet bag from the corner. Your council thinks I can be of use. Makes a bloody change. I owe it to my neighbors to try anyway. I'll meet the contact now. I think that might have been the last Christmas card to deliver. Let me go check. Apparently there's one left. You've been asked to act as a postman for the calendar council. There's one card left. Who is it for? You know, it would help me if you actually told me who, who is it for? Where am I even supposed to deliver it? What the fuck? Please give me more information. So, I don't want to leave the princess here, because their next quest thing is to take them to Whirlbury Juxtamarie? Juxtamare, I think it was? Just Juxtamare? Which I never found in Albion before, but it is in Albion. So, while I'm out exploring, I might just come across it, given that everything's been moved around and reset. So let's keep them on my boat. The signalman, though, needs five port reports from Albion. So it's fine to just leave him here, and I'll make sure not to turn on my port reports, actually, for Albion. See if I can get five. So, try to curry favor with London's elites. I'm going to set up shop in London and offer my services to this generation of builders and industrialists. He sighs. I suppose they're a dreadful bunch, but someone has to stop them making the mistakes we did. He heads off into the smog and does not look back. Oh, and then we can do stuff with them other than picking up. Just picking them up. Uh, the settlement is in a shabby little consulting office near the station, decades out of fashion. A motto on the cobweb window reads, Told you so. <laughs> Despite its appearance, business is booming. London's elite, unused to being spoken to, frankly, considers them a delightful novelty. Direct the signalman to curry favor with the ministry. 
and try to garner ministry gratitude. I don't want ministry gratitude. To curry favor with London's industrialists, Sigmund will attempt to find you a cryptic benefactor. That would be good. Yeah. Men and women with minds of steel and hearts of iron, their friendship could be profitable. In search of grace and favor. I'll do what I can, if the pig-headed idiots will listen. The signalman's expression is dour as ever. I never paid attention to me when I was just a worker. He adjusts his bowler and tugs his collar straight. But now, I'm a consultant. He heads off from the station, whistling tunelessly. Good luck. Come back in 30 days to receive the fruits of the signalman's labors. So can I pick them up? Yeah, I can pick them up even before they've come back with anything. It's not like you have to wait for them to come back. Anything else to do? Um, this is where you sell stories and stuff. I don't want to do that. I think the note was the only quest thing. Yeah. I'm also just like peeking around, wondering if anything's changed because of the update. Like, are there new, new ships available or? Nah. Let's go exploring the new Albion. So the first thing I want to find before anything else is the mausoleum because I have these firkins of red honey to deliver there. And every minute that I travel out in the skies is another minute that the temptation might become too much for my crew. So I want to find that place as quickly as possible. And the only leads I have for places are these two prospects, for the Clockwork Sun and for the Parliament. Parliament is supposed to be down south, which is kind of where I came from, so I guess it's further south. And Clockwork Sun is supposed to be somewhere about down here. So at least I know not to go to these places, because obviously the mausoleum isn't going to be there. So, you know, the mausoleum could be anywhere in here. Let's just search around, see what we find. Uh, let's go ahead and sell the Tears of Ostalot, because there's no way I'm ever going to be able to use this admittedly really cool sounding weapon. Oh, it only sells for 250. I thought it'd be worth more. And then buy as much supplies as we can. And let's go. Shall we go out in cardinal directions? Yeah, sure. Let's go west. I love how alive this place looks. Fuck off, Dreadnought. I ain't got time for you. Okay, maybe I do have time for you. <laughs> oh, that's not gonna reach. What, are you running away now? You started the fight. Supplies. I could use it actually. I just went through fuel and supplies, so I've got two hold spaces. Let's do that. Gain two supplies. I probably should go back to heal my ship, but I'm used to Albion. I'll I'll be fine. Probably. Oh god, another one. 
It hasn't noticed me, but you know what? I want to pick a fight. Damn, that was a lot of damage. The Phoenix Roost. That was an easy fight. If you can get them caught kind of against a building and hit them on their broadside, it's pretty easy to hit them. Gain an unlicensed chart. Yes. Oh, actually, give me a ministry stamp permit instead. Probably gonna have to eject the cargo, but it could also heal my hole. It did not. It did spawn something. It's actually, dump one of the supplies. Jettison this thing too? Nah, got 26 sovereigns. Terrible reward, but oh well. Dazzling radiance washes your engine in a gleaming tide. Glory, glory, glory. Go under here? No. <laughs> I wasn't sure. I couldn't really see my light hitting it. It's a very industrial zone. What is this? Have I finally hit Brabazon work world? London falters here. The sky becomes stony. Its paths barred by sudden crags. Albion is the place that has those weird bubbles of, I, I don't know what, messed up time or space or both. things. I do kind of want to see what they're all about. I think somebody in the comments told me something interesting happens. <laughs> That's it. Which is good. I don't want to be spoiled on what happens, but I can't help but think they're going to teleport me to a random place on the map. Like, they're all linked up to each other. One will link up to another and take you who knows where. Mm. Uh, let's go discover this place first. that. Oh, hi. What are you? Albion Marauder. Oh, she has been screaming in the background. You can probably hear. Scream me, little baby. Break into the captain's cabin. Barrel of unseasoned hours. Oh, 
Funny thing is, I don't know if this is a place that I've just never... Like a region that I've never discovered in Albion before because I didn't explore all of it. Or if it's just something that's been changed in the new update. That is really cool looking. I get the feeling this might be the Brabazon work world. It feels very like a it feels like a huge, huge mining operation. Oh, she's so screamy. Listen to her back there, baby. So hazy. Look at the winds. Look how they're affecting that tree. How is the tree alive there? Also, how do I get back there? It's well hidden. Opening a Christmas card. The revolutionaries in Winter's Reside gave you three cards. You've delivered the first two. The third was in an unmarked envelope. And you can hardly play postman if you don't know where to deliver to. Inside the envelope is another envelope. A card addressed to you. Oh. Okay, so it was on purpose that they didn't tell me where the final one was. Okay. That's fair. Open it. See what they have to say. An invitation. You are cordially invited to Corn Crake House. There we battle injustice and would welcome your contribution. You, all of us, have been its victims. Society's law is unjust because natural law is unjust. Tyranny begins at the top, not from the factory owner, not even from the palace of a queen, but in the arch of heaven itself. Those who join us should be prepared to defy the suns and prepared to win, for our grievances are immeasurable. To assist the revolutionaries further, you must return to Winter's Reside. I should be prepared to defy the suns. That should be no problem. Corncrake House. Is Corncrake House... Yeah, Corncrake House is at Winter's Reside. It's not a separate location. Let's go peek over there and see what that is. Wait, hold on. Your cavy flies into your... Oh, don't disappear, your cav... Ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> I want to read that. You are not where you thought you were. The sky is wrong. This is not your, where you were meant to be. Was it a trick of the mists? Has a wind carried you astray? Have the heavens themselves turned on their axis? Double back or press on, which will earn me the wrath of the storm that speaks, I think. I could double back. That would be fine. It looks like it'll cost two fuel, put me, putting me down to five, and I'm really close to a station, which probably sells fuel. But I think pressing on is kind of more interesting. 68% chance of success. Let's push forward into stranger skies and hope that somewhere beyond you'll find familiar territories again. Oh, I lost a crew and it got, gained a lot of terror. The mist is soft at the windows. The stars have gone awry. You crawl onward. There's an outbreak of violent star madness among the crew. In time, you find your way back to a stretch of sky you can locate on your chart. Your journey continues. Gained 10 terror and lost a crew member. Is the wind actually pushing me? I think... I think it is. Hmm... Maybe not. No, I don't think it is. 
You are deep within the Ormswold. London has washed her hands of this craggy wilderness. The Ormswold. Ooh. What are you? Starman Explorer. Search for survivors. Yeah, see if we can get our crew back. We succeeded, but we didn't gain the crew. You explore corridors whose walls and ceilings are dabbed with unfamiliar constellations. At last, you find a cabin barricaded from within. It holds a crewman who seems lucid. He begs to join your crew. Your own crew aren't sure. What if the star of madness seizes him? Hmm... So if I get them, I'll gain terror. I'm already at 39%, and terror isn't exactly the easiest thing to lose in Albion. Really anywhere but the Reach. I'm going to say no. Let's drop him off at the next port. In the meantime, he'll be confined to quarters. Yeah, that was a good reduction. He looks disappointed, but agrees. The crew are happier with him locked away and are cheered by being able to perform this act of sensibly cautious charity. I was going to see what that thing is up there, but this block of land here is really blocking my way, so, eh, forget it. Oh, I forgot to read that text about the cavi. Um, yeah, I think the cavi said that... Uh, it mentioned something about the the cavi pedaling on its mechanical bat. Did I know that it was a mechanical bat before? Because I thought it was alive. Maybe I was told that at some point and forgot? Or maybe that's the first time I've heard of it. Oh, things are getting green here. The Incognito Princess, whoa! The Incognito Princess dons her disguise tiara as the Royal Society comes into view. <laughs> disguise tiara, I love that, that's cute. So this is where the Royal Society is. What is this smoke machine? It's probably more than just smoke. Maybe that's what's making it all green around here. Making a little oasis amidst the crags. Oh, there's like a lovely pool down there, yeah. <laughs> Disguised Tiara. Well, I think we have some quest stuff to do here. Plus, you know, just all the new stuff to explore. Oh, this is where Mr. Menagerie is. Haven't seen them in forever. They're at the Royal Society. The airy, pretty mansions of stone and glass rise above the verdant gardens, while below machines whir and groan. A persistent sound of hammering pounds through the air. Let's visit Mr. Menagerie. A tattered poster by the station advertises the services of Mr. Menagerie, purveyor of fine scouts. An accompanying picture displays a tall, cloaked figure, slightly stooped, clutching an array of adorable little beasts. Close to its long chest. I just realized Mr. Benagerie is one of the, um, curators, aren't they? Somebody left a comment telling me about more about the curators and how they were called the masters before. Maybe they still are. And how all their names start with Mr. And then that's when I realized, oh yeah, Mr. Barleycorn, Mr. Pennies. And their name is Mr. Menagerie. Plus they're cloaked and tall and stooped. So 
Yeah. I guess they would want to see Mr. Barleycorn seal as well. Yes. Show Mr. Menagerie the seal of Mr. Barleycorn. Is Mr. Menagerie one of the seven Mr. Barleycorn is looking for? A hiss. A heavy jab in your ribs. Put it away. We will not look. It covers its face with its wing. We are not ready to look. Still a long way to go. When we rest, maybe. Maybe then we will be ready. Follow Mr. Benagerie to the end of its journey. It might be more receptive to the seal then. Hmm. I didn't know there was an end to their journey. I just assumed that after visiting with them for a bit, they kind of like popped up at a totally random port, but apparently not. Okay, uh, so let's see. The Diffident Bat, I think, is... Does it say, like, what tier it is or what you need to be able to use it? Oh, no, it does, actually. Yeah, this one doesn't mention any requirements, which, I mean, I guess means you don't need any. This one says mirrors of 25 or more. This one says mirrors of 75 or more, which I definitely don't meet, but I want... I want to buy the Ratronaut anyway, because it's a Ratronaut and looks so happy and eager to explore. But I can't. I don't have the moment of inspiration. Would there be any point in getting this? This is probably just a not as good cavy, because it's like a lower tier. It returns after finding one discovery and conveys little information about what it finds. No, that's not good. Let's just listen to a story of things past. The Wild Delights. Mr. Benagerie gestures to the Ormswold, out beyond the cozy confines of the Royal Society. Old ground, hunting ground, when wings spread free and soared, and we were indigo in tooth and claw. Are those teeth you can see below the hood? When the skies were young, when we were young, our bargains were savage, our hunts were sacred, we lifted all wings, our appetites naked. All gone now. Things change. Time takes all. Hmm. Yeah, that just made me think of Mr. Pennies and all the people that they're keeping alive at the top of the mountain. And I think they mentioned that their kind lives a very, very long time. Such a long time that they often grow to regret a lot of things, just filled with guilt. Just the long life thing made me think of that, because they're talking about... The old times, which could have been, hell, I don't know, hundreds of years ago, maybe? Thousands? And I'm sure they've been alive for a very long time. So, oh yeah, if you acquire nothing, Mr. Menagerie will move on to another port. Good. Okay. And where does the note say they went? Let's see if I can decipher the clue. The throne... Of the Hour King. The Throne of the Hour King? I'm not sure what that is, actually. I feel like I should know. I know there's some sort of a thr There's the Throne of Hours near London, but I never found anywhere to actually dock there. Hmm. There looks like there's... There looks like there's a lot to do here. <laughs> Let's visit a celestial exhibition. To the light of mostly himself, the mellifluous president is planning an exhibition in the Royal Society. Its theme will be the science of the skies. He's happy to pay visiting captains for items of interest they might come across. Hmm, so one uncanny specimen gets turned into 15 sovereigns and 10 experience. That's kind of terrible. I mean, I have 21, but... It's not like I have so many that I just want to dump them for nothing. Hmm. I do have six condemned experiments. I probably don't need that many, but still, I'll keep them. Yeah, I don't want to donate any of those things. Okay, well, before I get too deep into the Royal Society, I think I should end this episode here. So I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, we're going to go introduce ourselves and meet the Royal Society.